Trek Beyond is directed by Justin Lin and stars Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and Carl Urban. Now, I've never really been the biggest Star Trek fan, especially the last two movies. I was not really a fan of J.J. Abrams' interpretation of the films. I thought there were just so much like Star Wars, especially the first one. And why would I want to watch a Star Wars film without Star Wars characters when I could just go watch a Star Wars film? So, I was hoping that with a new director, Justin Lin, that this movie would have a different feel, maybe just be more fun. And in Star Trek Beyond, we do get a very different Star Trek movie that I think this change of tone has led to different problems in the film. But it is still, I think, an improvement over the last two Star Trek films. I do like that this film is far more breezy and light and fun than the last two, which were kind of more self-serious. This one is jokey, and it has a nice pace to it. It does not feel too long. And I did like that aspect of the film. And I think that Chris Pine actually gives his best performance as Kirk in this movie. I always thought he was a bit wooden in the other two Star Trek films, but I thought that in this one, he was a little more natural. By far the best part of this movie, though, is the scenes between Zachary Quinto and Carl Urban. Those parts of the film are easily the most emotional and the funniest and even the most dramatic, I think. Zachary Quinto has always been the star of these films, in my opinion, and Carl Urban is given so much more to do this time around. And it just makes this film far more enjoyable because you actually have an interesting interaction throughout the film. And there are a couple others, like Kirk and Chekhov, which is okay. Chekhov's kind of a boring character. And then Zoe Saldana and Sulu has an interesting interaction, but they don't really have much to do either. But that's where we kind of get into some shaky ground with the Sulu and Zoe Saldana part of the story. Because there is some really, really bad storytelling Keeping it vague here because I'm not trying to spoil, but Sulu and Zoe Saldana basically just run into something that kind of just like reveals a big part of the plot, and it's so fake, and it's so unrealistic, and it drives me up a wall, because it's just sloppy. It's just too freaking sloppy, and there's a lot of those moments in this film. I get that the whole point was they were going for a more fun tone, and the story is less important, but it's still ridiculous. There's too much ridiculous ridiculous just conveniences in this movie and when those kind of things happen i just can't let them go they're just too much of a deal breaker for me this movie is structured kind of weirdly there is very much a feel that this movie has been rushed especially the first act i think the first act just feels so haphazard and sloppy even though it ends with a nice action scene it just feels like so obvious the whole thing is so obvious there is a character in this film whose role is the most obvious thing i have ever seen in my entire life and when they try to subvert it and then don't later on it's the least surprising thing i've ever seen and makes for incredibly lame filmmaking i don't mind a predictable film if you can nail the things like structure and pacing and storytelling but this movie really only gets one of those right and that's pacing so i can't really forgive it when you have this haphazard nonsense predictable plot and it's fine it's supposed to be a fun action movie so i'm not going to penalize it too much but it makes it feel very rushed it doesn't feel like it was thought out very well in my opinion the only last thing i really have to say about this film is that idris elba as the villain one of the worst villains i have seen all year i think up there with apocalypse level terrible villain he is so boring such a waste of elba's acting ability i don't even know why they bothered to get elba he doesn't actually get to do anything in this film. You could have got any no-name actor off the street to play this part, and it wouldn't have been any different. So once again, this year has just been a waste of talented actors and villain roles. 
It's been awful, and I hate to see Elba be another casualty to this serious problem. This review probably sounds more negative than I want it to be, because I really didn't dislike this film that much, because at least it was fun. It was fun to watch at the least. That's what I didn't have in the other Star Trek films. They were so serious and ugh. At least this one, I could have something that was slightly fun, even if it did have a lot of filmmaking problems, in my opinion. So, even though I didn't love this, I thought it was okay. I mean, it's an improvement for the Star Trek franchise, in my opinion. And I'm gonna give it a C. Last thing I want to say before I close this video out, because I forgot to mention this, is that there are some serious editing problems in this film where I don't know what the hell is going on, and I still don't know what the heck is going on, even after the thing was resolved. There's especially a scene at the end, where there's a chase scene, and the way it ends was so confusing, I didn't know what had just happened, and I really still don't understand, like, how that made that happen. It doesn't make any sense, because the ending was so abysmally terrible, and it made some of the action scenes less visceral. But that's all for me. Comment below what do you think of Star Trek Beyond? Did you think it was better than the other two? Which one was your favorite in the franchise? And if you would like to, you can subscribe below to not miss another video of mine. Thank you for watching.